brakes. Good. Power. Holy smokes, you hit this thing and it rips. ABS still brake by wire, still a little odd. Coming around some of these corners. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. This is everything I've been wanting. Power on. Hello and welcome back to another out of spec reviews video. Welcome here to beautiful sunny California and welcome to many Mustang Mach-E GTs, a whole line of them. We're gonna be testing this car, driving it for the first time and seeing what some of the differences are between the regular Mach-E and this. Now you guys know, uh, and you've spent time with me in many different versions of the Mach-E. We've driven actually the Mach-E 4X on this channel many times, which is the extended range all wheel drive. And we've driven the extended range rear wheel drive. And I've taken both of these cars on big road trips. And it's been an interesting story to cover this car from the start. I have to say over software updates and now full functionality with Electrify America with plug-in charge, things are looking up. And I think for me as a performance enthusiast, this is going to be the car of choice. So I'm very much looking forward to driving the GT for the first time. I'll take you on a full tour of the car, walk you through all the specs. And then of course, we're going to go out on the road and shred up some awesome corners. Well, folks, we're starting this off right in the Mustang Mach-E GT Performance Edition, the PE, if you will. Uh, let me hit you with some numbers real quick. 480 horsepower, 634 pound-feet of torque, three and a half seconds, zero to 60. That's some pretty spicy numbers. Uh, interestingly, makes the same amount of power as the non-performance edition Mustang Mach-E GT, uh, but this makes 34 more torques. Uh, pound feet torque. Also, pricing for this particular one, 69,800 before federal incentives. Very reasonable, I think, considering the numbers on paper, I, I'm just thinking like combustion car world, you would never be able to get this level of performance for that much money. Of course, this is a direct competitor of Model Y performance, but I think there's some unique things on this car that I'm at least excited about. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about my experience with Mustang Mach-E and now driving the GT, why this one I'm, I think is gonna be pretty cool. Also, later on in this video, I'm going to drive a non-performance edition GT, try Blue Cruise, and just kind of get a sense of the suspension tuning, because this has the really cool um, magnetic dampers that are fully adjustable, so we're going to be playing around with that based on drive mode and user input, so I'm looking forward to this. Um, let's see, what is the, so it's got the $5,000 performance edition package, obviously, it's cyber orange, 88 kilowatt hour usable battery pack, 99 installed, you guys know the drill, we've been in mach -E's forever, uh, 200 40, 250 miles of range. I don't know, 260, 270. I think it's 260. All the range. Really, the car's got plenty of range. Regular Mach-E is so efficient. Honestly, this really shouldn't be that different in terms of range. I think it's more of a wheel tire combination than anything because drivetrain's relatively the same. It's got a larger front motor than normal Mach-E extended range, but these things just go and go and go. Range is not a problem in this car. It's got all in the world. Let me roll up the windows because of some noise. We'll put the air conditioning fans on because we're in California and it's totally Toasty. Um, have to say, I think the screen's responding quicker in this car. The GT's got a faster screen with faster motors. What else do you need to know? Range, price, charging stuff. We'll talk about charging when we go and let's hit the road. First off, brake pedal. I don't know. Feels pretty good. I'm going to put it in drive in low and I want to drive the car in normal mode, engage mode to start. So I have everything in engage. And I, you know, the, I always start our drives off really gently looking at calibration, things like this. Two permanent magnet motors in this car. And you know, you'll hear me, hear me compare this car to Mach-E 4X and Mach-E rear wheel drive. And um, oh, the new software is pretty good. It's snappy and smooth and like really good. By the way, these seats, mega. So good. You sit down in this seat and it's like world of difference. You get all this upper back support with this beautiful little thing here. It's like so comfortable. Now I should lose about 20 pounds, I know, or more. Um, but I think if I did that, then I would fit in these side bolsters a little bit better. But that's an incentive to lose some weight. We're following a lady walking dogs down the middle of the road. No complaints here. I love dogs and they're really funny walking over each other. So let's test, uh, do I have one pedal driving on? I don't think so, now I do. So I'm just gonna pull here and let some, let some people go on by. Instant noticeable change in the steering probably a tire selection, but instantly noticeable here. And that's quite interesting for sure. 
All right, let's let these cars go by and off we go. Let's test one pedal driving calibration. Now you guys have heard me say in the past that it grabs the brakes a little bit too harsh. Mm, I think it still does the same thing. Um, it, you get this, the, you know, the permanent magnet motors bring you almost to a stop and then it blends friction. I wish it blended friction a little bit earlier. Let's try it again. Yeah, you get this, ooh, then it coasts and then it breaks. It's not a consistent ramp down, but that's okay. Uh, aviator plug-in hybrid right here. Gotta love that. That's a corporate car for someone for sure. And off we go in engage mode in the Mach-E GT. Steering is noticeably heavier than the normal Mach-E. And let's talk about the normal Mach-E. I've had some amazing things to say about the Mach-E. I think it's a great car, truly a fantastic platform. Uh, one of the best all around packages for an electric car. Plenty of range and uh, everything like this. However, some of the finer details I've had mm, maybe a little bit of issue with and I think there was room for optimization and Ford knows there's room for optimization and now we're starting to see the fruits of that optimization come true and starting with this is thermal management this car has an additional thermal management loop wow that was unbelievably compliant over a speed bump more so than I was expecting uh, that's great because one of the problems with making an SUV really sporty is you know it's a high car you got to really compensate with stiff suspension um, uh, and it just becomes unbearably rough. I'm looking at you, Alfa Romeo, Stelvio, Quadrifoglio, X3M, same problem. Rear definitely feels way stiffer, but that's the thing. And um, yeah, I'm really interested in the suspension on this car. This is gonna be the big, 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 big story for me at least. We'll go to the left here, I guess. Hmm, feels good so far. Everything's feeling, all the low speed stuff is feeling really nice. What? All right, guys, this might be it. So my, the, the all-wheel drive Mustang Mach-E 4X was the highest performance version of the car. And for me, I'm a Mustang fan, right? You've seen, hopefully, my Mach 1 review uh, where I just gave the car a glowing, glowing, glowing review. And I absolutely love that car. And I love Mustangs. I've been a Mustang fan forever. And um, even my parents were. I think my dad's first car was a Mustang. It runs in my family. Like, we've had so many. I remember my mom was driving a Mustang for a while. Like, we love these cars. And... Okay, first off, that's, we'll talk about that in a bit. That was stupidly fast. Uh, <laughs> just had to punch it. It just spun the front tires. That was great. Um, so Mustang's an important car to me. And Mach-E 4X was a little bit of a letdown in the performance region for me because when you drive it hard, it overheated in like four minutes on a Canyon, five minutes, I don't know, but I'd get turtle mode all the time. And um, I thought the suspension was really not great. It gave you the impression of performance with a lot of internal compliance pushing, you know, really soft pushing. So you'd feel yaw in the car, you'd feel the back end move, but the tires were actually still glued down. And to me, it was really good at like 610 and then the harder you push it, well, it all kind of fell apart. At least Ford tells me that this car is built for real performance driving. So let's talk about what's different, what I'm gonna be testing here. This is not a full review of the Mustang. You guys and I have driven this many times. This is the GT specific stuff that I'm looking for. And first off, there's a new mode called Unbridled Extend. You guys know there's different modes. Okay, first off, instantly, I'm just losing my mind. This car drives so much better, and I haven't even taken it out of engage mode. What? Okay, I'm <laughs> a genuine reaction. I haven't slept in days. I'm really tired. I was so, like, I'm falling asleep, and you can see I'm, like, really pumped about this. Now, this is an important car. This is a car that's on my shopping list instantly after taking that first corner, and I'm going two miles an hour. Wow. Okay, so, um, of course, there's Whisper Engage Unbridled. This car is a new mode once you're in Unbridled, which is Unbridled Extend. It's really for track use, for back road blasts, where it black backs down the stability control uh, and actually removes some of the power, which I'm totally fine with. So they take the peak acceleration power out, they take the peak regen power out, transfer that to the friction brakes, and then uh, it still does regen, still does power, but this way you don't have the motors overheating really sort of instantly. And I think this is a good compromise. This extends the longevity of driving at high speeds. You see, the problem with an electric car driving quickly is uh, when you're flooring it a lot, the motors, specifically the stator and the rotor, everything in there, mostly the stator, they just get red hot instantly. The inverter temps go, but the battery has so much thermal mass that it just lasts and lasts and lasts. So you're you're sort of, you know, as what is it, this, you're as fast as your slowest link or something like this you know what I mean? Um, and so therefore 
what the unbridled extend mode does is it limits the peaks and lets the entire system in theory come up to temperature together. And this is a great idea because when you're on a back road, when you're on a track, you don't need maximum acceleration all the time. You don't need to just rip it, rip it, rip it. What you really want is, um, you know, just the ability to drive more and push the car and feel the car. And you're not looking at numbers or zero to 60 times. That doesn't matter um, unless you're doing like quarter mile runs. You wouldn't use unbridled extend for quarter mile runs. So I'm looking forward to testing this mode out. It also backs down some of the ESP stuff, which, you know, is always fine with me. That's a welcome addition. And oh, beautiful yachts in the water. We're here in San Francisco. I see the Golden Gate Bridge, the city in the distance. This is just incredible. And I have to say instantly, I am just extremely surprised. I'm driving down the middle of the road here on this unbelievably beat up rough surface. And don't get me wrong, it's rougher than the normal Mach-E. It's a little less bouncy almost though. And the suspension calibration is, I would say, softer than expected and near perfect. One of the benefits of putting on adaptive dampers, they call it Magna Ride, I think, I don't know. Um, but yeah, basically adaptive dampers is you fill the, the center of the, the damper with a, um, a magnetic fluid, and then you can run current through the damper, which is has then variable, almost infinitely variable control of the stiffness of the damper. So you have three main settings, and then there's some algorithm in the car that's been programmed uh, by the incredible chassis team at four. Ford. Do not get me wrong, Ford builds some of the best handling cars ever. Mustang uh, GT350R, legendary car for GT. They know how to build a good car. I said this in my Mach-E 4X review. I'm like, I just wish that car was a little bit better. Here though, this one seems to be the one that I'm excited for. Oh wow, this thing is, it rips. <laughs> you know, I don't even really care about straight line acceleration, but I care about all the ancillary stuff. So what do you say we get out of town Get on a back road. What else should I tell you just as uh, sort of background information here? Um, charging stuff. I spoke to some of their people on the charging team today. It's no longer going to fast charge just to 80%. It's now going to go up to 90. So we'll do all new charging curves. Plug and charge works on Electrify America wonderfully now. I still don't think the Pass Plus membership situation is sorted where when you use plug and charge, you have to spend more money than you would if you were a member. So that needs to get sorted. Um, yeah, little things, but the optimization's happening, and that's all I care about is amazing starting point, and now we're just turning up the dials and dialing it in. Let's go hit up a canyon road, put it in unbridled extend, and shred this thing, and take a look at the feeling of everything. But I gotta say, just driving this around at low speed, this is even more pleasant to me. The seats are incredible. I, no, the seats are the best part. You gotta get a performance edition just for the seats. I'll try the GT, of course. I kinda wanted to drive the GT first, then the performance edition, but that's okay. And um, yeah, then we'll test the, uh, the braking and acceleration. Oh, the brakes are good. The brakes are good. <laughs> this is so much better. <laughs> I'm genuinely really, really pumped. Canyons, let's go fast. And now you join us in the canyons. I've just dialed up unbridled mode for the first time. I haven't even tried any of the acceleration yet, so we're certainly gonna do that. First off, steering, awesome. Power on, it hits the rear motor first before it blends the front. So you get this awesome feeling of power on oversteer, um, but it's not necessarily compliance in the chassis, it's just rear tires. Brakes, good. Power, holy smokes, you hit this thing and it rips. ABS, still brake by wire, still a little odd. Coming around some of these corners. Oh yes, <laughs> yes! This is everything I've been wanting! Power on! Traction control is getting in the way, of course. Okay, folks, I wanna try unbridled extend. The car's really fast in a straight line, no question. Why will it not let me do unbridled extend? One pedal driving off, unbridled. Do I need to be stopped for this? Let's try it. Stopped, unbridled extend, not available. Hmm. It says, for your safety, some features have been disabled while the vehicle's in motion. I don't understand. Well, let's drive it for a bit in unbridled mode, and then we will switch to unbridled extend. Of course, three regen settings. You have drive, low, and one pedal. I have the car in low right now. I actually prefer one pedal, but let's just get a feeling for how this thing is stupid fast. 
stupid fast amazing turn in look at that great oversteer you just give it a little bit of throttle it blends the rear motor you just burr, burr, just pivot the rear motor around coming in hot standing on the brakes of course oh great brake pedal abs pumps clicking away <laughs> it really masks the right the weight i have to say the rear end is totally settled down compared to normal maki front end's always been good but the rear is now has some amazing. This is a road, holy! Yes, <laughs> stuff's flying around down here. Holy smokes! This is, and it just rockets out of a corner. Now the problem with not running unbridled extend is, of course, things are going to get hot. But so far, I haven't had a thermal limit. We're at ninety-four percent state of charge. And um, yeah, unbridled extend will back down some of the power. I actually had it in that mode for a brief second, but you can hear ABS just click, 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 click. It's just constantly sitting on traction control. There should be a way I can turn this off. Driver assistance, auto hold, hmm, additional settings. Maybe there's no more traction control off button in this car because of unbridled extend. Is that possible? This is normally where it would be, I thought. Vehicle. Uh, traction control. Yeah, I always thought it was under driver assistance. Vehicle hotspot, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. So I guess unbridled extend replaces traction control. Let's just pull here, put the car in park, and try unbridled extend, shall we? So here, car's in park. Won't give me unbridled extend. Car off, car on. Powering up, unbridled extend. There we go, into drive. Oh, selected mode. Not available to maintain system performance. Maybe I already got it hot. That doesn't make any sense. Let me give this some cool down time and then I'll get it back into unbridled extend and then we'll rip because I think that's where we're gonna have some awesome little yaw, some rear end rotation, if you will. It's really planted on this road though. Holy smokes. <laughs> Talk about a quick way to get down a road. Holy smokes. Look at that thing. Just little angles. It's so controlled. Just burp, 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 burp. This, this is a, they put eyelashes on their Model S. That was terrible. <laughs> they put eyelashes on their Model S. Um, I'm gonna let this thing cool down or do whatever it needs to do to think about life because maybe it's never been driven like that. And then we'll get it into unbridled extent. I can't imagine it's hot. Let's try a launch really quick, coming to a stop. Left foot hard on the brake, flooring it, and... So it's great to about 40 and then it kind of fell on its face a little bit. Zero to 40 is just like, just a, you don't need any more. <laughs> This is my kind of car, folks. This is solving a lot of problems that I had with Maki. Brake pedal still a little bit interesting, but let's just let this thing cool down. We'll get it in unbridled extend, and then we'll hit the twisty some more. Well, I just got off the phone with a Ford engineer asking why I couldn't get into unbridled extend, and he gave me some good info. There is a uh, a couple different modes that you need to be below like if you drive the car really hard it won't let you go in unbridled extend that's weird i would think you could just put it in unbridled extend it would run the cooling fans at max and then try and pull you down but it doesn't so you need to get the uh, motors cool battery state of charge can't be too low and there's a few other things that go into this unbridled extend mode but it seems pretty sensitive and if you're gonna drive hard it sounds like you need to put it in unbridled extend first he also said that if you're absolutely ripping on the car even in unbridled extend and you overheat the battery it pulls off and then goes through its normal d rating settings i'm not quite sure why why that's the case but essentially what we're gonna do is turn regen off and we're gonna coast to try to cool down the motors or whatever we must have overheated driving it hard and um, yeah hopefully this setting will come back up also I mentioned there was no traction control off button in here that's because I'm an idiot I didn't use my eyes new Mach E is regardless of GT or not have a hard button for traction control off so you push it once and traction control is off but also Big news in rear wheel drive and all the other mach -E's, if you get a new one, you can turn advanced track off now by pushing and holding for a few seconds 
So now we hold for advanced track off, there we go. Now stability is decreased. Now I'm sure there's programming on there for um, over wheel speed to protect motor mounts and axles, as well as rollover protection. So there's always, you pretty much can't go full off in any SUV type vehicle. But what I'm gonna do here is just drive it super easy at like 30 miles an hour and wait for unbridled extend to kick on. And then we have traction control off and now we have ourselves a spicy meatball. So we're finding all the little niggles with this car, this unbridled extend off thing's kind of annoying. Um, can't imagine many other journalists are running into that, but it's not really meant to use for the street, right? So we're just kind of testing the car, little angles here or there, but uh, tomorrow I'm actually gonna do a thing on the autocross with the car. Maybe I'll shoot a video, maybe I won't, we'll see. But I'll certainly talk about it on the Inside EV's weekly podcast, airing every Friday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, a little plug. Anyway, we're just gonna take it easy, let this thing cool down, or whatever it needs to do. It, they call it an FIS number. It's basically the, the amount of regen and output motor current given in a certain period of time. Uh, basically, I guess, doing a heat calculation off of that number, and it needs to drop below a certain number um, for it to allow unbridled extend. And then once you're in unbridled extend, he said you can push it pretty far before it pops out. So I don't know, we need to spend a little bit more time with this setting, so we certainly will, and we'll see how it goes. And uh, yeah, everyone's probably like, why are you driving so slow? Well, you don't understand. I wanna drive fast. The Mustang doesn't wanna drive fast. We're gonna get some pictures of the car. He also said if you leave it parked, I'll leave it parked and turned on and see if that helps. And then we'll be back to ripping. Hey, good news, Unbridled Extend is available. I just let the car sit on running for a little bit. We're gonna put it in L for increased regen. You can't do one pedal drive and Unbridled Extend, uh, which is interesting, but I think it's really just meant for track use. That's one hell of a gnarly bump. And um, so this should be slower. It should have less regen. It should just be like everything back down to extend rippage. Uh, it indicates traction control is off. I actually turned traction control fully back on, by the way, just for this, because I wanna see how much leeway it actually lets you have. So yeah, it doesn't feel insanely peaky in the power. The, oh, <laughs> it's, it's honestly totally different in terms of on throttle uh, calibration on the back end. Wow, stuff's flying around back there, dang. Um, it's not nearly as oversteery. It's much more balanced coming out of a corner. I think they really turned down the rear motor, but I like this because if you're just in regular unbridled mode, it's, just, it's a little artificial. Like it's just, and it gives you these like a little two, three degree slides. Here though, yeah, it feels a little bit better. It lets you work the tire. Really want to get that front end to grip and get in. Uh, much more track-oriented setting rather than the impression of speed, if you will. And this is just, I went around two corners, right? I will try and find some more, but there's just people driving two miles an hour. So we'll wait here and see if any more cars come up. Um, brake pedal, I mean, the brakes are way more powerful than the normal one, but the brake pedal itself is still a little bit... I mean, it's brake by wire, so what are you gonna do? I mean, it's not a bad brake by wire system, and so I think it's just what we have to deal with. So we'll hang out here, and then we'll hit the road as soon as someone comes up. Someone's coming up, full throttle. Man, I just love how much it uses that front motor. It's so funny, you just spin the front tires because there's really leveraging that. Let's bring it on through. So braking feels good in unbridled extent. Little rock on the road, let's be careful. Big power. Yeah, it's nowhere near as drifty in this mode. And it's nowhere near as fast, but that's okay. I'm fine with this. It's actually, it feels like normal Mach-E 4X. Maybe even a little bit slower in this mode. Look at this, coming around the corner, big power. Yeah, you're just letting it lean on it. Wow, this is a good mode. This is like canyon carving mode because you're not crazy oversteer when you get on the throttle. Just balances everything out. And yeah, it's quick, but it's not like crazy fast. You have that if you want it, but obviously you can't go that long using that mode for thermals. I think Ford took the right approach here with this unbridled extent. So anyway, there's just too much traffic now, but we tried the mode and um, yeah, everything was pretty good here. What do you say we get out of the GT performance that I'm absolutely blown away by? I think the suspension's great. The brake pedal time to where it actually hits the brake is still, mm, I'd like to see this worked on. I'd still like to see one pedal calibration worked on. I still need to get answers to a few of your questions such as usable battery pack capacity is quoted at 88 kilowatt hours, but we've heard from Darren Palmer that they might stretch that a little bit. So we gotta see how the future software goes. I don't think this car has extended 
uh, use of the battery pack. Um, quarter mile times, they said they're gonna work on optimization for this. I know there was some concern about Mach-E GTs actually being slower than the GT performances. And I heard that at like 85 miles an hour, there's a big performance dip. Um, I'll try it in the GT, but right now we're on like this back road that's amazing, but it's not, um, not really a car that we can do 80 miles or a road we can do 80 miles an hour on so it's a very limited test drive of course i'll have one to test for an extended period of time we'll try all this stuff and uh yeah like speed limit's 25 now and we're in a city so we'll take it out of unbridled extend put it back in whisper mode which is how i prefer to drive the car to be honest and uh, 99 percent of the time and then dial it up when you need it unbridled mode's really raw really rowdy is what i'm trying to say it's it's pretty drifty and fun and i'd love to try unbridled mode with advanced track off but these are all the combinations we just don't necessarily have the ability to do i gotta go switch cars so I have to say, there's a lot of really big improvements here, and jumping out of an E4X and into this is night and day from, like, the, like I guess what I'm trying to say is the regular Mach-E is really good, but it's like, a, let's just say it's 90% is what it feels like to me. This is like jumping up to 97, 98%. There's still some weird things I want to work out braking wise and throttle calibration wise. It's it's really aggressive on the throttle when you get past like a quarter throttle. It's like, whoa, see like it just spun the front tires. <laughs> I'd like to actually see them blend more rear motor in earlier and less front motor. I think that could help. I don't know, but um, yeah, let's just cruise up. We're gonna be in cities the rest of the way and then we'll try Blue Cruise. I haven't tried it yet with the hands-free thing. And then we'll uh, finish off our first experience in the Mustang Mach-E GT, performance edition and non-performance edition. And now you join me in the regular Mach-E GT non-performance pack. I wanted to do Blue Cruise stuff with this car, but let's just launch it. It just smokes the front tires. Man, honestly, you can't, it's fast. What more do you need? Yeah, maybe the other one, it hits a little bit harder in unbridled mode, but yeah, whatever. Um, man, I can't, I keep overheating these damn things. When you just do one acceleration, unbridled extent just goes away. So I, th this is a weird strategy. Uh, they do say though, and I was talking to some of the engineers just before, um, on the way to the track, like go unbridled extend obviously, and that will run the coolant loops to chill everything down before a session. Uh, so that's good to know for sure. Uh, also, these seats are better than the stock seats and they uh, allow more room for people of a larger variety, such as myself. However, um, the Mach-E Performance Edition has better seats. <laughs> I just, I love the shoulder support in the Performance Edition. So in terms of suspension, oh my God, instantly like we've just gone backwards in time here. Um, yeah, oh man, no thank you, yeah. Yeah, this just drives like Mach-E GT then. Uh, or sorry, Mach-E 4X. This is, you gotta get a performance edition. I'm just telling you right now. Um, yeah, I gotta get a performance edition. The, the, the suspension instantly is noticeable. The rear end's back to being bouncy. This is how I remember Mach-E being. And I remember like being annoyed by it a lot. And this is, uh, yeah, back to that. Oh no. Okay. I'm not going to evaluate this car in terms of performance because if you want to go fast, you have to buy the $5,000 Maki Performance Edition package. I don't even want to talk to you if you don't buy it. Spend the money, get the good one, you get the good seats, and the car is so much less busy on the back axle. I don't even know if you can see it in the video, but it's just hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. And like, look at the back end. Like when I start th throwing this car around, it's just wah, wah, wah. it's so soft and compliancy, and the bushings are soft. So. Um, yeah, so basically we're gonna do Blue Cruise on the highway, which I haven't experienced yet. It's basically the same thing. So Mach-E's all have lane centering. You can lane center whenever you want. Um, but if you wanna do it hands-free, uh, oh, nice old Beetle, uh, then you need to go into, wow, this car rides like uh, not great. Really not 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 a good, the, the performance edition's awesome. All right, that's, that's where I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna put this car in a whisper node now, but it won't make a difference because the suspension's totally uh, passive on this car. It's not an active suspension setup. And uh, here we have a, oh, that's my old California Route 1 Mustang Mach-E. 
<laughs> if you guys recall when I made all those videos with the white uh, California Route 1, the range test, the charging test, it's that exact car that's behind us now. That's so great to see an old friend, my old Mustang. I had it for like three months, I think, something like this is crazy. Um, yeah, so definitely important to have the uh, GT Performance Edition. And now we're just gonna cruise over to the highway and drive this thing on Blue Cruise. What was I telling you? Oh yeah, lane centering. Lane centering happens all the time, unlike Super Cruise. Super Cruise, if it's not scanned, you don't get lane centering. In this car, it's my understanding, you just always get the same, at least base level, what's available today. And then when you're able to, it will do eye tracking and do Blue Cruise, enhanced free stuff, which uh, seems like a much better solution than GM Super Cruise, which is very limited use case. At least this will just always do its best it can, given the lines in the road. I like it. And now we are merging onto the highway in the Maki. -E, so let's give it the beans. Yeah, it's plenty fast for sure though. You gotta get the performance edition. The suspension, that's the big, that's the move. You just need the you need the active damper in this car. It's night and day. Really night and day. Uh, this lady needs to stop talking to us. So let's uh move over and let's try some blue cruise, shall we? So Sitting in this lane now, speed limit is 65, so I've set the adaptive cruise control. I can then turn on lane keeping system, which is uh, normal active lane centering. Although now it's gone, yeah, now it's gone completely blue. Oh, looks like we have smoke show here on the right. That's not good. Um, so let's turn the system on now. Now we're on blue cruise, check this out. So I'm just gonna keep watching ahead. Here goes another mach -E. And uh, that's uh, that's our old car, yeah, there we go. So, now we're just sitting on Blue Cruise at, uh, oh, I should up the speed a little bit here. There we go, speed up. We're just rocking it along, gotta love it. So, obviously Maki is always so quiet on the highway. That's one of the best parts of this car is NVH is really good. Um, especially for an SUV that's so loud. I haven't put my hands on the wheel in a while, which feels weird. Um, wonder if there's, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's all blue, so we're on blue cruise. I guess that's how that goes. I was expecting to see like a hands-off little display. I thought I'd seen that before, but I guess not. We'll just see how long it lets us go. Um, 2.8 miles, and then we're still on here, so. Of course, I'm ready to take over and, and do things, but what's interesting is it's letting me do it with traction control off. I've just turned traction control on. <laughs> I've never seen an adaptive cruise control system work with traction control off. That This has to be the first car. Um, also, doesn't really matter, not really. So anyway, I mean, it seems just, you know, really competent lane centering. Feels good, it's doing its thing. I'll let you know if anything weird happens, but this is kind of it. It just stays in the center of its lane as long as you can see the lines without your hands on the wheel. I just have this little blue orb that's going around and I'm here to monitor the driving situation if needed, but for the most part, it's just doing everything. And you don't have to touch the wheel all the time, which is so nice. I don't like torque in, input into steering wheel as a driver monitoring system because uh, I've mentioned before in other videos, I think it's kind of dangerous if you put torque into a steering wheel um, to let it know that you're there, especially ones that require a lot of torque. And sometimes Mach-E uh, does require a lot of torque, or at least consistent for a while, be like, hey, I'm here. It doesn't use capacitive touch like Volkswagen does or, or other car automakers. So yeah, I would say this is a good solution using eye tracking. You wanna make sure you're watching the road. Just because your eyes are on the road, though, doesn't mean you're always processing everything. So I'd like to see deeper levels of integration of DMS as time goes on, sort of interconnected to see, are you actually consciously watching the road rather than just watching the road? I think that is a big distinction that I'd like to see more work done in that area. But overall, I mean, it hasn't asked me to put my hands on the wheel once. It feels super solid, super competent. It's doing a great job of maintaining distance, maintaining speed, ah, maybe not so much there, <laughs> but it, it actually was fine. But it did get a little confused. Overall though, yeah, I've used, now it says keep hands on steering wheel, so it's turned Blue Cruise off for this portion. So this must not be pre-mapped. And then I guess it'll go back to blue once we're off the bridge, is that how this will work? I don't know. Oh, we need to exit right up here, so I shouldn't move over. 
I guess it turned off because we have to exit. So that kind of makes sense. Wow, this is this is where the suspension is so annoying without the active dampers. Just bop, 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 bop. <laughs> Get active damper. Get performance edition. It's sort of oof. Oh wait, we're going straight towards San Francisco. Okay. Man, this thing's quick. It's a quick machine, and I think it's even quicker at 100% state of charge than 75% state of charge. Or maybe I'm just feeling the performance edition extra torque at that point. So now I've kicked the system back on. We're locked in. And yep, just doing uh, lane centering, not blue cruise at the moment. So it's requiring hands on wheel, which I'm doing. Just grazing the back of the steering wheel here. And we'll go back to blue cruise. Uh, no. Anyway, um, let's wrap up this video and let me share my impressions with you about what I think. I guess Mach-E GT performance and Mach-E GT. First of all, for me, the big the big story of the day is the GT performance. Instantly, noticeably different than regular Mustang Mach-E 4X in all of the best possible ways. Really strong braking system, really good suspension tuning, especially when compared to Mustang Mach-E. Uh, overall, that car seems really solid. A couple things I'd like to see. I'd like to see one pedal tuning still fine-tuned a little bit. I want it to, it basically you get this big ramp of regen, then it dies, and then you get another deceleration where it grabs the friction brake, so you get jolted twice. I'd like to see that smoothed out. That's across the entire model line. Um, I would also like to see the brake pedal tuning just worked a little bit. Of course, it's so hard to make a brake-by-wire system work with blended brakes. I know it's difficult. It's been done. I just think it needs another few percent. They can make these iterations as the years go on with the over-the-air software updates to every module. What you really need to make sure is the hardware is good and then you can obviously adjust with software and no question the hardware is good, I believe at least. Uh, really solid braking system, etc. Also, uh, I think that the range is fine. The charging curve is going to be updated, so I'm very much looking forward to this. I hope it's good, I hope it's impressive, I hope it's solid. And overall, I feel like the Mach-E is just, this is gonna be the year of improvements. And we'll be covering it. Every time there's a major update, if I have access to a car, I will share it with you. I'll tell the story, we'll test it to actually see if it's better than another one. Here's a Mustang Mach-E actually in front of us. It's a California Route 1 that's been purchased, not a you know media vehicle. I see them everywhere, they're popular. People really are buying these things. And that's exciting to see for me is just the passion from the owner group. I think it's really great. Um, overall, Mach-E GT performance has me thinking personally about you know, well, let's let's wait on the charging curve stuff. But if the charging curve is good, that might be a good car for me. You know, I, I, I'm sort of thinking about what am I gonna get next year? I'm in the market. Uh, and so Mach-E GT, uh, I, would, I personally would not consider a normal Mach-E, if you will. I mean, I just, uh, I don't like the suspension on this car. But the GT Performance, Coming to a channel soon near you? I don't know. Maybe not. I don't. I have an order in for a Tycon right now, so that's where my head's at. But um, oh, I missed the wave. They waved to us. Hey, sorry. I totally was not paying attention. Anyway, um, thanks so much for tuning into another Out of Spec Reviews video. Thank you to the Ford team for inviting me here to this beautiful drive on some amazing roads. And uh, by the way, I covered my whole flights to get here. All this stuff. So you know, the, just to be totally transparent with you uh, about the the travel to get here. Um, I genuinely am impressed with the GT uh, performance. Really am. It's been an interesting trip. Just drove EQS yes, uh, today, this morning, and now Mach-E GT. Oh, I'm tired. I need to go to bed. Uh, and I just uh, had some espresso, which was nice. Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Huge improvements here. Uh, I think there's still some limitations when it comes to thermals with this car. My impression is, um, yeah, it's not like a track car. You're not going to go out and run laps in this thing. It's going to overheat still. But uh, we'll test it. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But overall, as a daily driver, as a performance daily driver, the suspension's way better than Model Y performance. The driving's way better than Model Y performance in almost every possible way. So there, if that's that's probably what you've been waiting for me to say. What do you think about Model Y performance versus this? This is better.
Have a good day. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.